my followers and newcomers hit that like button smash the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on so you don't miss any new content right so today I'm going to be teaching you how to make some shadows in Photoshop um, we're going to make some more realistic shadows like we have here and we're going to make some more poster style shadows as we have here just to ground some objects right let's get into it I have my back oh, turn the final touches layer off else we won't see anything um, I have my penguin cut out and I have the shadows that we're going to be creating so let's open the shadows folder I have three shadows in my shadows folder to create a nice realistic shadow let's turn them all off so the first one is a very hard brush and it's anything touching the surface basically we have an ambient shadow which is very light and very subtle and we have the shape of what we're casting so let's get started and show you guys how to make them let's turn that one off right so we'll create a new folder let's name it shadows 2 there we go Ooh, more shadows either way drop that one down to the bottom right so within our shadows folder let's create the first layer and name it touching there we go so what you want to do is grab your brush tool be on your keyboard um, and hold the alt button and select a shadow color from the surface where you're going to be cast in the shadow so around about here is good for us so we've got this nice dark brown color let's just pick a little bit of a lighter color actually there. there we go that's it okay so we're going to select a just go back up to the top select a hard round brush make it smaller 100% opacity I'll turn my flow off a second so let's make it slow and zoom in right now you want to take your time over this this is a tutorial so I'm just doing it fairly quickly so the video doesn't go on for ages but you want to take your time and just paint wherever your object contacts the floor just like so this is rough guys so obviously I've shown you what it looks like at the start so we're gonna make the tail touch in this one as well there we go and you want to turn that layer blending mode to multiply there we go and create another layer put it below the touching layer and name it ambient right on this layer you want to take your brush tool same color get a light brush soft brush even not a light one <laughs> and turn the blending mode to multiply again right you want to I turn the flow on because I'm using a Wacom tablet and then turn the opacity down real light because you want to only make some subtle changes to this so anywhere a light source is here so anywhere behind where you think a shadow is going to fall I like to just paint some darken it down a little bit just like so maybe that's maybe even a little bit too much so I'll turn the opacity down a little bit if you look up here it helps to give you a, a good idea of what it's going to look like if you've zoomed in because you lose a bit of perspective right now for the final layer of the shadows you want to create a new layer drop it down below the ambient set this layer to multiply now you want to go to the object so our penguin in this case control click on the penguin layer um, or you can right click and click select all so you've all the pixels selected and then go back to your oh, let me rename that one um, shadow complex there you go Go back to the shadow complex layer and click edit fill foreground color because our foreground color is the color we've been using okay 
uh, control D to deselect or you can go to select and then deselect. Now when you get, get our move tool and hold the shift key I like to hold and drag it down. Actually that's a lie, undo that, click it, right click and click distort. I like and then basically you want to line the shadow up where we think it's going to fall. So roughly here, I would say. It's a quick tutorial, guys. So obviously you spend a bit more time lining it up and making sure it looks realistic. Click or tick. So if the shadow doesn't quite touch like it doesn't here, a tip I like to do is go into Edit and click the Puppet Warp. Wait for it to load. Put a point there and a point here so it doesn't move too much. And then we'll zoom in a little bit. Put another point on the foot and drag that point so it lines up and meets and makes our shadow look how our shadow should look, really. <laughs> there we go. Click the tick. And it has transformed to there. Brilliant. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. I like to create a layer mask and you can either get your gradient tool and make sure the gradient is set from foreground to transparent. Obviously we're in a layer mask so we're using black and white. Anything black will hide, anything white will reveal. Hold the shift button and draw a straight line, a couple of straight lines. To hide the shadow because obviously a shadow gets weaker the further away from the object it is. So you can use your gradient tool to fade it out. Uh, if I delete that and show you the other way, which is the way I normally do, um, I get a soft brush, opacity down, and then I just like to paint with black. I think it gives you a bit more control the further away shadow is the lighter it gets and obviously that's further away from where the hand is so that will be lighter as well there we go so obviously this is a rough tutorial for you guys you take a lot more time on this to make it look more realistic and after you've played around with that and got it looking how you like uh, you want to it's always best on this stage to duplicate the layer and then just hide that one so you can go back to it if you make any mistakes. Right, apply the layer mask and then right click right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object. Now we're going to go up to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. So you can see what's happening here if you blow it up it completely disappears. So the closer you are to, a sh to the object, the shadow is going to be more defined. The further you get away from it, the more blur you've got. So I'd look out here just to see how much blurring you're applying. So I'd say about that's good. Click OK. Now on the layer mask for the smart filter, double click it, click invert. So you can't see any of it. Take your brush. Make sure it's set to white and again we just want to gently paint over the parts of the shadow we want to blur just like this i'll turn my opacity up a bit so it's a bit quicker but you want to take your time over this and make it look as realistic as you can And that's how you create your realistic shadows. Obviously, I've created this quickly in the tutorial, so it doesn't look as good as what it should do. If I drag this one back up so you guys can see, turn that one off, take a lot of time with it, distort and warp so you get your shadow positioned where you want to, to your light source, and it will look great in no time. It's just about taking time over it, really. 
Right, let's move on to the second type of shadow. So we've got a single color background here with a little bit of gradient. We've got our penguin and we've got our shadow layer. Now you can use this just to ground objects or create a simple, simple shadow if the light source isn't very strong. Now in our shadow layer, we have five layers and they basically are just with a soft brush circles and transformed. So I'll show you guys how to do this. Let's create a new group, hide that one, create a new layer. Um, we're gonna take our brush tool and sample a color from the shadow. If you wanna make it a little bit darker, make it a little bit darker because we've got a, because we've got a single color background and we're not really matching to any composition. It's up to you what you want to do. Right, let's make the brush bigger, turn the opacity up, turn the flow off, and we just want to make a nice mark on the page like that. Then we're going to take our transform tool, hold our shift button, make it a little bit smaller, do that again. Shift button, make it a little bit smaller, drag it down so we get it in perspective of where the penguin's feet are. And then we want to drag it underneath the penguin and set that layer to multiply, all in multiply. Drag it down and reposition where you think it looks good. There we go. And again, you guys want to take more time over doing this. This is a tutorial. I don't want to waste your time. So you have more time playing on Photoshop. There you go. Uh, turn the opacity down to what you think looks good. And literally to create these shadows, you grab the shadow again, duplicate the layer like so. Zoom in, hold the shift key, make it smaller again and place it wherever the object will be cast in a little shadow underneath. So where his tail is slightly off the ground there, put that underneath, turn the opacity down a little bit, play around with what we think is good, duplicate that layer again, zoom in, hold shift, and put, stack the layers, so make it smaller. Put that in the center of the shadow you just created. Ooh. Roughly about there. Turn the opacity up on that one, make it a bit darker in the center. You can do the same for this layer. Duplicate it. Ooh. Hold the shift key again, transform, make it smaller. Ooh, don't wanna do that. Drag it into the middle where the shadow is going to be stronger. And basically you just build up the layers like so. Duplicate that one again. Zoom in a bit so you can grab it. Drag it over. Make them a bit bigger. There we go. Rotate it so he's sat underneath the foot. It's all about taking your time over this. I'm doing it quickly so you guys can get away and start practicing. And there we have it. That's how you create the simple shadows. Obviously I've done that fairly quick. If I drop that one below the background and turn the ones I did earlier on, you can see there that you take a bit more time about it and it'll look great. Brilliant. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. Um, follow me on Instagram. I've got two Instagrams, Football Creator and Andy's Effects. I'll link them in the description if you like football like I do. It's worth having a look on there and commenting on the pictures, any tutorials you want to see on how things are made. And the Andy's Effect one is generally any photo manipulations. So, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. See you later, guys. Cheers.